okay good morning and welcome and uh, with this video with this uh, lecture we are going to start uh, to study the server side of web application so right now uh, we mainly work uh, inside the browser and uh, right now we are going to start closing the, the loop uh, and uh, uh, seeing how to implement uh, the basic functionalities on the server side uh, just to complete the the, uh, the application logic um, i have a first uh, very short video in which uh, we want to recall uh, only the basic information about the http protocol that we would uh, need to remember in the future uh, so that we can move into the implementation of web servers with a, a bit more um, uh, understanding of what ha is happening at the protocol level okay so um, about uh, the http protocol we already saw that uh, uh, the uh, the protocol is uh, uh, a request response uh, uh, connectionless protocol so every uh, new uh, mm, web page or web resource uh, is uh, exchanged uh, uh, through a request message that is being sent from a browser uh, to a server mm, usually the, the sender is a browser and uh, the server after uh, say, analyzing the request is able to uh, formulate a reply which is called the http response uh, to that request uh, this is the basic mechanism we already discussed that uh, when we uh, when we presented the general web uh, architecture so i'm go not going to to repeat uh, uh, that now uh, but we are going to go into a bit more detail first of all uh, our main discussion will be about uh, http 1.1 uh, which is mainly the, the the protocol in which most of the internet is running today uh, but actually even if http2 is is growing its uh, its impact and its uh, uh, presence uh, in websites uh, uh, the important thing is that uh, the evolution from http 1.1 to http version 2 is mainly at the transport level so http2 offers a lot of uh, optimizations uh, concerning uh, uh, multiplexing uh, concerning push uh, of information concerning security encryption and so on uh, while uh, from the application point of view for the programmer's point of view there is very little difference uh, and most of that is not not even noticeable so the the um, methods the verbs that we are defining in http 1.1 are the same in http 2 and uh, um, the the officially you know the, the claim is that http2 doesn't require any change to uh, the working web uh, applications okay in if we exploit http2 then uh, of course the uh, uh, connection will be faster the latency will be slower uh, um, smaller uh, but uh, the, the the application logic will be ex exactly the same so right now for uh, the level at which we are going to, to study the issues uh, uh, working with http1 or http2 is basically the same we don't see that at the javascript level we don't see many of the differences at the level of, the, of javascript uh, uh, apis uh, uh, that allow us to, to manage these connections uh, about uh, uh, some words about the structure of the http messages so we uh, already discussed that there are, there are uh, separate request messages and response messages uh, and they uh, both have a similar format uh, either either request or response messages always have an initial line first line uh, a set of headers uh, and uh, possibly a body hmm? the body is not uh, always uh, present and if it's present uh, it's uh, it's uh, separated uh, from the headers by a blank line hmm? uh, so uh, the, the the format uh, of this message is quite uh, simple in both cases and we'll see more detail about uh, what is in the in, in each of these fields uh, the request uh, first line is very simple all of this is very simple actually uh, the request uh, first line is just a command a method name a verb name and uh, we'll start uh, studying which are the, the method names uh, today because we'll need them uh, for for uh, creating the back uh, the, the back end of the application uh, the most uh, used method is the get method that uh, uh, requires a new resource from the server and uh, so the first line contains the method name the path uh, that we are requesting and the um, protocol version basically so uh, method and path are the two uh, mainly uh, only uh, um, let's say parameters uh, of, a, of an HTTP request. Uh, 
about methods uh, HTTP defines uh, this list of methods so there are uh, five plus four nine methods I, 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 I wrote the, the last two four in a smaller font because we are not going to use them they are basically for managing collect connections um, and uh, while the first uh, uh, five uh, methods are the ones that are used by uh, at the application level so get we already discussed uh, for uh, getting a resource so for reading a page or an image post for submitting information for sending information so whenever we send up a form an html5 form uh, most of the cases uh, the data is sent using the post method instead of get and um, put is very similar to post but instead of sending new data it will replace uh, uh, existing data we'll see the difference uh, when we discuss the uh, rest apis and uh, uh, of course um, we have the delete uh, that as the name says uh, is asks the server to delete a resource um, of course we cannot just call the delete method on uh, any existing web server and we hope that it can delete the pages that are there okay uh, the methods are defined in the protocol but the support and the implementation of the method depends on the server and of course depends on the permission that we have uh, for accessing that server um, concerning the response uh, the first line is again very simple three fields the first field is the, the protocol version uh, on which the, the the server is responding to our request and the second and third field are actually exactly the, carry exactly the same information uh, which is a status code and uh, an English phrase that describes the status code so saying looking at the status code that tell us 200 or looking and reading the message uh, which it says okay is exactly equivalent so the information is written uh, twice one in numerical format and the other in text format and status codes uh, are uh, quite a, a big number of possible codes but they are all grouped uh, in five uh, big categories uh, category and they are all three digits codes and the first digits uh, uh, will tell us the category so category two all the status codes starting with two uh, represent a success in the request so the request has been uh, executed correctly um, codes uh, uh, of the family four and five represents errors so this request could not be honored due to a problem on the client side so maybe the request was wrong or the authorization was missing or a problem on the server side so maybe there, uh, there was a bug in the back end or the database was not connected or something like that uh, 300 status codes uh, handle with the, the um, deal with the redirection that means that uh, the resource is not a specific like specifically at that path that I requested but it's uh, have, has been moved to a different path so please uh, uh, redo the request uh, using an updated path and so on uh, if we want more detail this is the full list uh, of uh, status codes uh, that are defined by the http um, standard uh, i try to write in a, in a bold face those that we are most likely to see and of course we are seeing a lot the 404 not found when you are when we request uh, for a page that doesn't exist or we are following a link which is outdated so it points to a page no longer uh, alive on the on the target web server all the internal server error 500 and, and more and, uh, and luckily uh, most of the requests will end up with a 200 uh, status code uh, which means that uh, okay uh, this uh, request was honored so that's for the, um, the most the information that we need for, for uh, executing requests uh, lies in the first line of the request and the first line of the response uh, concerning headers uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, headers uh, are again uh, a set of uh, zero or more uh, say lines uh, both in the request and in the response uh, and they usually uh, specify additional information about the request or about the response or about the body of the request or, or the response hmm? uh, the syntax is very sim uh, simple again header name uh, column header value and uh, uh, at the http 1.1 standard there are 46 headers defined uh, we're not going to see all of them we're not going to care about most of them uh, so we uh, we just uh, uh, see the categories in which they are defined if you are curious you can you can go to this link and you'll find uh, all of them uh, explained 
um, those that are outlined here in color and bold uh, are the, the, those categories where uh, there are um, headers that are of interest to us hmm? um, especially message bud information uh, that will we will need uh, to exp uh, to uh, say explain what happens to the content um, okay M moving to the to the body uh, this is the real payload of the protocol so we are sending requests and responses to exchange information in the request in many cases the only uh, useful information is the uh, url so it's the path uh, but in some cases where we are submitting for example with a post uh, where we are submitting some data uh, we are also attaching some 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 values some some information in the body of the request and when we are getting a page uh, of course we need uh, to have uh, the html or the image or the css file or whatever we are requesting into the uh, response body um, so all this data uh, is uh, is available here and uh, since the HTTP protocol doesn't care about what kind of data we are transporting uh, there is a mechanism for specifying uh, which data or at least the format in which the data is being transfer transported so uh, one of the headers which is valid both in the request and in the response uh, specifies the so-called content type of the body so content type is a header in the header area of the request and then will specify the content type of the content being sent in the body in the request body or it could be a header in the response and then it will specify the content uh, uh, format uh, of the uh, of the response body uh, basically most of our pages will have a content type of a text slash html and then we have an optional uh, chart set uh, specification for specifying the, the, the encoding of characters uh, we'll work a lot uh, with uh, applications like json uh, format uh, for and we'll see that in a, in a minute in, in the next lecture um, for for exchanging data between the server and and the client and then there are other content types uh, for example for sending forms in different mo uh, in different modalities and so on uh, the body may also be uh, compressed so there's an, another content encoding header that specifies whether some kind of compression has been applied to the body of the request or, or the response so that uh, the browser is able to decompress it uh, when it received that um, about content types uh, here we have a short table that will uh, list uh, uh, the most important ones as we said uh, html and json are the are the ones that we care most in, in this course uh, but of course uh, all other information uh, all, all other data types uh, uh, can be encoded can be described by a proper content type uh, one important thing is that uh, the browsers rely on the content type uh, to decide what to do uh, with a resource so uh, while in the, your operating system you are using you're using file extensions so a file that ends with pdf uh, is a pdf file and a file that ends with html is uh, an html file uh, well on the web this doesn't, this doesn't apply so the extension of the file is not considered by the browsers usually uh, and the content type uh, is uh, considered so basically the content type is something of, for a document that you are viewing is something that is set by the server and the web server is telling the browser look uh, i'm transferring you some content that may be a text content or a binary content and deal with this content by assuming that it's an HTML file, or by assuming that it's a PhD, uh, PDF file, or by assuming that it's a, a PNG image, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so the browser does not look uh, at the file name, it only looks uh, at the content type. Actually, browsers also look at the file name when the content type is not available, or when it has some errors inside, inside that. But it's a, uh, a non-standard fallback behavior. So let's go back to the, to the HTTP methods. Um, and uh, this will be our final slide of the, the short introduction which uh, is what we uh, should remember uh, in order to be able to use http for uh, collaborating for co collaboration between uh, the, the browser and the, and the server uh, when a browser and the server needs to, to exchange information they can use http hmm, to communicate with each other and uh, they can use the different http methods 
so the browser natively uh, already knows how to do gets and posts whenever we click on a link the browser will issue a get whenever we submit a form the browser will issue a post hmm? so it's a predefined behavior uh, of course uh, in our front-end applications we want to add additional uh, data exchange between the browser and the server and that's why we are able to use uh, uh, the get and the post methods of course but maybe also other methods and um, the, we we use the semantics of what they do uh, that we saw on the in the first table uh, that we showed in this presentation uh, but this just uh, remember us that uh, some of the methods uh, uh, allow um, a body in the request uh, for example a post or an input usually sends uh, some 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 data because the data that is being sent that are being posted that are being saved on the server while a get uh, it doesn't allow to to specify any uh, request body uh, on the uh, on the other hand uh, the, um, the response usually carries a body with that uh, that will be in the get resource content and in post or put uh, it could be the data uh, that has been saved of the, or the result of the of the request modification um, uh, the one specific uh, method which is head is a bit strange because it doesn't have a body in the request nor in the response uh, basically head is equivalent to get where we don't care about the body so head uh, only returns uh, the headers uh, of a get request without the body so you only use the basically to test connectivity with the server whether a given server will reply or not and then here we have uh, four uh, two additional columns uh, the fourth column uh, it's called uh, idempotent um, and it's a strange word that means uh, uh, whether uh, repeating the same request more than once will change the result or not so uh, an add-on potent uh, um, uh, method is a method that can be called one two three four times and the final effect will be the same as calling that once so it is allowed to uh, do the same get method more times in a row and the result will not change so the the result uh, of the application information so uh, so we need uh, we need also to take that into account uh, uh, any get in our application uh, should never change uh, the uh, the application status mm, the application data uh, while usually post is a is an operation which is not as important so because it tends to add new information or to request some new actions so if you repeat the post then data will be saved twice so we are inserting maybe two orders uh, uh, to uh, to um, requests uh, or whatever um, and the put uh, is only used to replace an existing resource uh, so if you replace an existing resource twice with the same data the result is the same as uh, replacing that one so that's why it's, it's important so basically it's uh, it's allowed to repeat any of these requests uh, without any effect uh, on the application except post requests and this is uh, uh, what the uh, method should how the method should behave and we are supposed to honor these uh, characteristics in our application and uh, the last column the fifth column just tells us which methods can be used in html forms uh, that natively by the browser and the only two methods that html forms may use are get and post and i would say that 99 percent of the time we want to use a post when you are when we sending a form instead of, of a more normal get hmm. okay so that's the basics and let, now uh, we may move on into implementing a web server which is able to respond uh, to this kind of http requests <laughs>